through an almighty God. Let's look at what some of those privileges were this morning. And then we're going to look at how he lost them, how he got there. The very first thing that I see that Judas loses is that he loses the precious presence of Jesus Christ. Here he is, a man who walks with God, and he realizes that he is his master. He has the opportunity as part of a 12 to have a relationship with Jesus Christ like no one else has ever had. But, but he takes opportunity, and he lives in a velvet run. He should have gotten himself out of it, and he should have realized that he's in a losing position. But he did not move himself, and so he preciousness of the presence of God. Do you realize how precious the presence of God is to every one of us? Do you realize what we feel here this morning in our worship? The love of God, how great it is. The presence of God that we feel in prayer. The presence of God that we feel when we read His words. The presence of God that we have when we come together with the people of God. David said it this way. I, I got the wings of the morning. God, I can't get away from your presence. Or the height of the sky. I can't get away from your presence. Day or night are not hid from you even though the darkness. God, your presence is there. If I go down on the ground, your presence is there. Even in my mother's womb, God, you saw me being formed. And when all my parts were being fashioned, your presence is there. Do you realize how great we have had it this morning? Those of us who know and serve God and live a life for God, the presence of God, it's so great. Uh, Brother, Brother Jeff, we were talking this morning. Sometimes we just take that presence for granted because we're in the everyday grind of life. And Brother David, we don't realize how great the presence of God is right there. Judas didn't realize, Brother Terry, how great he had it in the presence of Jesus Christ. I heard of a man who had gone away from God and someone was talking to him and, and they began to talk and they said, well, don't you miss uh, the fellowship of the saints and don't you miss this and don't you miss that? And he replied back, he said, I'll tell you what I miss the most. I miss him. Amen. The presence of God is nothing to take for granted. So here it is. That uh, uh, Judas, he walks away from the presence of God. There's no greater blessing in our life than to know the presence of God is with you. He's comforting us. He's guiding us. He's blessing us. We're never alone because He is with us. He promised that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you always, even to the end of the world. And here it is, Judas lost the preciousness of the presence of God Almighty. The second thing that he lost was he lost fellowship with the apostles. Look at these men. John, Mark, Matthew, Peter. Men who all have books that they wrote. And God made it part of His holy word. And their name is attributed to it. Judas, we don't find the book of Judas. We don't find people jumping to name their children Judas or even their dog Judas. It's a name that's kind of looked down upon. He missed the reward and the fellowship of the apostles and other disciples. Even in heaven, these uh, disciples would have uh, designated places and privileges. Uh, do, you, do you realize that it's a blessing when Brother, Brother Wally, I look at you and call you Brother Wally. There's something about a relationship with the kingdom of God. Brother Josh, and I like being called pastor, but I like being called brother, Brother Seville, because there's a relationship, Sister Rachel, that brings us together. Uh, and, but Judas, he lost all that. And so yeah, when, when we lose our place with God, we lose a wonderful place with the family of God as well. Amen. I'm telling you that uh, there's some lessons that we can learn from Judas this morning. I don't want to lose my fellowship with the people of God. And then the third thing that I see in he loses this. He loses the 
blessing of Pentecost. We were talking this morning in Sunday school about Pentecost and speaking in tongues and the blessing of the gifts of the Spirit. And so here it is that the other disciples, that they're sent away to the upper room and, and Jesus Terry told them to go and tarry and wait for the Comforter, wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost that, that I'm sending you. There are all the other disciples and they're experiencing that rise and fall of worship and they hear the, the wind rushing in and they see glowing tongues of fire. They see folks speaking with a new tongue and, and the outsiders are saying these men are drunk but they knew that this was what was prophesied about the prophet Joel and this is what Jesus taught us to go and wait and tarry for. It is the comforter. It is the power. It is the one who we are baptizing but Judas didn't have an experience in Pentecost because he lost it. He lost the privilege. Let me tell you, there's something about Pentecost and being involved in the move of the Spirit. Amen. I appreciate God speaking to us this morning. Amen. That's the presence of God moving through an individual as they are working and moving in the Spirit that God speaks and blesses the body. Amen. Walking away from the things of God. Amen. It's what loses our position in Pentecost and the move of the Spirit. And then I see that he lost his place in ministry. These men went on to do great things in ministry. He never had the place. The fifth thing that I see is he lost his place in heaven. Of all the blessings on this side of eternity, but for eternity, he loses this place in heaven. I need to tell you this morning, saint of God, I need to tell you, friend, you never want to lose an eternity in heaven. Amen. Amen. Eternity <coughs> is too long to be wrong. Eternity is nothing to be gambled with. Eternity is nothing to tinker and play with. Amen. But here it is that he loses all <coughs> things. And, and I believe that we can say he loses all hope. He loses heaven. So I, I need to say something before Judas ever lost uh, all these things. <coughs> There, there's something that, that happened. Remember in the Old Testament when the, 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 the school of the prophets, the sons of the prophets, they were building and they were chopping down trees and, and they went and they borrowed an axe head. And all of a sudden they lost the axe head. It flew in the river and it was gone. And they go and they call for the prophet. We lost the borrowed axe head. Amen. He speaks a lot. And I don't want to go, uh, go to that uh, 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 time and place, but it speaks of that which is borrowed from God. Amen. Uh, salvation of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift from God, but we can lose it if we're not careful. It's what God gives us, so we got to take care of it. But I don't know about you, but before an axe head ever falls off, there's something that happens. It begins to get wobbly and loose, doesn't it? You ever have a tool before and you're using it and before it finally breaks, it gets loose and wobbly. So the best thing that you can do is give it some preventative action before it completely flies apart. And so here it was that Judas, if he would have examined his life and he would have looked at it before he ever lost in greatness, he would have seen that things are coming loose. See, people don't usually just wake up one day and say, I'm not going to church. It usually happens when their attendance becomes sporadic. And when their uh, dedication to the house of God is not important. It just doesn't happen one day. They actually get some loose. Before people ever start giving up, stop giving up on praying, Usually their prayer life begins to suffer and their Bible reading life begins to suffer. <coughs> their dedication to the things of God begins to suffer. The axe head gets loose before they lose it. So, 
folks begin to lose their sensitivity to the Spirit, it's more important to get out of here than get to a place of prayer. It's more important to go by an agenda than to be sensitive to the Spirit. That's when things begin to get loose with folks before they ever lose it. Now, I, I just want to encourage us this morning that in the middle of life, in the grind of life, amen, make sure the axe head is not loose because you don't want to lose it. Amen. We need to tighten it down. And if our walk with God is loose, then we need to tighten down on those things that, 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 that we can uh, keep hold of. But you know this, before someone's automobile ever quits, before they come to you, they're noticing some things with it. It's better that they come to you and they notice that things are going wrong than wait till it breaks down on 81 or 209 or on their way to an appointment or on their way to work. It's better to find out what's wrong and take care of it. So this morning I need to say this. I don't know where everyone stands spiritually. I don't know where you are in your walk with God. But this message is about taking evaluation of things. Are things loosening up in your life? Or are they tied and impacted and holding together that your relationship with God is sure? I need to ask you, are you colder or are you bolder? Are you louder or are you louder? Are you squeaking like a mouse or are you roaring like a lion when it comes to the things of God? Today's evaluation day. And only you and God can evaluate. You see, one day a woman came by to Mary and she had, uh, to, jo uh, to Jesus named Mary, and she had an alabaster box of ointment. I've preached about this before, but that alabaster costing a year's wages, that, that precious aroma in there from the spike that plant with Joshua was expensive. But the alabaster box wasn't like going down here to Family Dollar and picking up a cheap bottle of spray perfume that you can spritz it here and there. It's a lot different. It was a costly box with costly ointment. But when you broke it, you had to spill it all out. There was nothing that would be left. So one day she came to Jesus, this woman who God had worked and moved in her life. With her heart of gratitude, she broke the alabaster box. She began to pour it out upon the feet of Jesus. And there she began to cry. And with her tears, she washed his feet. And with her hair, she did dry them. And Judas is standing back and he's smelling this, this beautiful aroma. And he said, what is this woman doing? Why, why did she break the alabaster box? Why did she give everything? Do you know that we could have taken that and we could have taken that money and we could have distributed it among the poor? But no, this woman, she gave it all to Jesus. And so Jesus was saying this, Jesus is worth something, but he's not worth everything. Judas had a problem already. He was holding the money by, by pouch. Uh, he wasn't concerned about that. Uh, he, he said, Jesus is worth something, but he's certainly not worth everything. I want to ask you this morning, is Jesus worth your everything, or is he only worth something? Are you sold out to God, or are there areas that are reserved to God? Because it's a dangerous place to be. I know a loser who thought Jesus was worth something, but not everything. You may be in a losing position if you don't think God is worth everything. Judas was upset. He was willing to give some, but it bothered him that someone would be willing to give all. There's a lot of people that think everybody needs a little bit of religion, but not a whole lot. <coughs> We need a whole lot of a relationship with Jesus Christ. I will give him. <coughs> See, Judas thought that he wasn't worth everything. So Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He had something that he could hold him both <coughs> But Brother David, he sold Jesus for something he can only hold in one hand. Church history tells us that he sold Jesus.
for the price of a prostitute. He didn't think that he was worth everything, but we see that he devalues him for something that's worth nothing. Something that can only be held in one hand. If you this morning don't think God is worth everything, the action is loose. Someday you might think that he's worth nothing. So it's time to tighten our head down. I've heard it. You know, the position that I've had, and you folks hear it too, maybe just because of where I stand and get to talk to folks. But I talk to folks all the time who tell me I stopped going to church because of hypocrites. Listen, I've said it a thousand times before. Church is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. You may say I'm throwing it in on the hypocrites, but are those folks any better that you're running with? I talk to people all the time that they come to the end of their life, and Brother Josh, they reaffirm what the Word of God says. Brother Craig, that life is like a vapor that appeared for a little time and then it's vanished away. I don't know where the years have gone, but somewhere in the middle of the years I gave up serving God and going to church and being faithful to God and now I'm scared and I'm concerned and I'm wondering if He'd love me and take me back. Amen. You know what happened in their life? Somewhere they thought that God was worth something but He wasn't worth everything. So the agendas of life took priority over their commitment to God. Amen. I need to ask you, are you bolder than you've ever been? Amen. Are you stronger in Christ than you've ever been? Is your convictions tighter than they've ever been? Or are they looser? Amen. God is not looking for us to live our life with a loose accent. He wants us to tighten it down so that we don't lose our relationship with God Almighty. It was interesting when you read, Jesus told the disciples, He said, one of you will betray me. What was the immediate response? We all know. Around that table, the Last Supper, they said, Lord, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? And then finally there came a, Master, is it I? Yes, Judas, it is you. Judas called him the master, Brother Wally, but he didn't call him Lord. You're a teacher and you're a rabbi, but you're not Lord. If he's not Lord of everything of your life, the axe head gets loose and you can lose out with him. God help us to never get to the place where we lose out with God Almighty. Judas was basically saying, I'd rather have money than have him. And in his deal, he lost the Lord, but he also lost the money. And he hung himself, all because he wasn't Lord of his life. Is he Lord of your life? Or is a relationship, is money, is something else in your time more valuable than your relationship with God? It's dangerous ground to be on. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to preach hard. I'm trying to encourage you this morning. I'm trying to, in your walk with God, ask you to evaluate your heart and your life the same way that I need to do my very own to make sure that the axe head is not loose. <coughs> See, some folks are willing to give their family and their friends everything but they jeopardize the relationship with God over it. And in the end, they really don't give a gift that needs to be given. The gift of Jesus Christ. I told this story before, but I'd like to tell it again this morning. Of a family who came and they talked to the pastor. They said, Pastor, I'm not going to be able to come to church the way that we used to. I'm going to take on a second job. My wife's going to take on a job. But we just want to provide for our kids and do a little bit more for our kids. So soon before they knew it, they weren't in church. Their children weren't in church. 
So they gave her son some money and said, son, would you run down the street to the, to the convenience store? Would you buy a loaf of bread? And as their son was running down the street, he ran out the street in front of a vehicle, was hit and killed. In his hand, he held money. But in his heart, he didn't have the knowledge of God that mom and dad could have gave him. Mom's dad, the greatest thing that we can do is give our kids Jesus. Friend, the greatest thing that we can give is Jesus Christ. I love what Judas says. If Sister Holly would come with the piano. Judas said to those who he betrayed Jesus for, when I give him a kiss, you hold fast to him. Judas was saying something valuable. He said, I lost him and I let go. But my recommendation to you is you grab him and you hold fast. Don't let him go. I believe if Judas could speak to us this morning, he would say, hold fast to Jesus. Get a tight grip. That don't let go. This morning, I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to help you in your walk with the Lord. How's the axe head? If it's loose this morning, then tighten it up. Maybe it's tight. Keep it tight. But if it's wobbly this morning, get out of the velvet rut. Get out of your comfort zone and begin to travel the highway of God's blessings and provision for you. Amen. Don't sacrifice His presence. Don't sacrifice the ministry that He has for you. Don't sacrifice Pentecost. Don't sacrifice fellowship with other believers. And oh, my friend, don't sacrifice an eternity in heaven. But tighten the eyes head. Don't be a loser. But win in Jesus Christ. This morning, I just want to invite all of us. Amen. If a church attendance isn't what it should be, should be, if your prayer life isn't what it should be, if your Bible reading life isn't what it used to be, if your convictions isn't what they used to be, what well, sounds like the eyes that is getting loose, we each have a responsibility to tighten it up. Tighten it up and know that in Christ that we are all winners. Don't lose this one. We're together in. Amen. I love you, my friend. Amen. I want to see the Spirit of God move among us. I want every one of you to be part of it more. So tighten down the accent. Amen. Make sure it's tight. Amen. Allow the presence of God to minister to you as you draw closer to Him. Amen. Gather in. Amen. Avengers.